Let's get physical, it's Jordan here back in with an update on all the physical releases coming to the Switch. We're in the fourth week of March, 22nd until the 26th, Monday to Friday. Retail, low print and imports plus our community spotlight. We want to thank our sponsor of this physical episode, Marvelous Europe, for their release of Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town. And what glorious look it is that the game is releasing this week. It's almost like it was planned. In Europe, this is available on March 26th and is, of course, available on the eShop, but also a physical version. If you pre-order, you can grab a wonderful Buffalo plushie so you don't have long left to claim that. There's also a deluxe edition, which includes some nice extra goodies, an exclusive A3 poster, an A5 notebook, and 10 trailers cards. Check out the 10 reasons why we're excited. More freedom than ever before. Embrace the pioneer spirit to shape the untamed wilderness. Discover new animals and produce and help them flourish in your farm. Many thanks to Marvelous Europe for sponsoring this video. Of course, this is going to be available in North America too. Golden Force is releasing this week in Europe. I reviewed this back when it released digitally. And if you like some old school but modernized action adventure platforming, then look no further than this. This is a pretty cool game for what it's going for. Be sure to check out my review if you need more info on it but yeah this comes in three editions a standard edition which is the one that i have right here right now there's also a limited edition which comes with a steam box plus they have a mercenary edition which comes with all sorts of extra stuff as far as i'm aware the standard and limited versions will be available at select retailers while the mercenary edition is only available on pixel hearts website and you can get 10 percent off any golden force products on their website pixelheart.eu if you use the coupon code WATCHGF10. Punky Dooster, it's his pick of the week. Monster Hunter Rise is a hotly anticipated title in the Monster Hunter series, a console exclusive to the Nintendo Switch. That is a massive get for Nintendo. This series is absolutely huge in Japan and it's getting even bigger in the West now. I know a lot of people are excited about taking this one on the go on their Switch. I'm not particularly into the series. I have some of them back there, but you know, after like a few hours, I kind of just feel the grind. But if you're looking for a game with so much content, so many hours worth of play, then look no further than Monster Hunter. This is going to be a big one, guys. I promise you. And God of Resin, Alolan Jojo, Alexander Kato, Dane Wilkinson, JCrod7776. It's their pick of the week. Balan Wonderland is a game that I was hotly anticipating. But then people kind of played the demo and just considered it to be kind of awful. I don't know what's gone on there. Yes, people reacted very strongly to the demo which released. I did not get around to playing it. It just comes with the territory of making reviews and videos like this. Uh, but yeah, this is supposed to be an old school 3D platformer type game made by the hands of Yuji Naka. His games have been hit and miss, but I really wanted this one to be a good one. Did you guys get put up by the demo? Let me know what you thought of it. Boombox is being a little brave with this one. It's his pick of the week. Overcooked All You Can Eat is what, like the third, fourth, fifth, seventh physical release of Overcooked on the Switch. From what I've read, I believe this is the first and second game mashed together into one with all the additional content and remastered from the ground up. So Overcooked 1 is now running in the second game's engine and it looks pretty swell. Lots of bang for your buck, but maybe this is not an essential purchase of your own like any of the 9 million editions of this series on the Switch already. Bladed Fury is a pretty cool looking game, really great art style, badass action. The trailer doesn't give much away in terms of what it will look like like with the controller in your hands, but it is looking rather swell, I'm feeling it. This is the US release, so I'm not entirely sure with Numskull's European release, they are kind of a pain in my ass sometimes. They're very vague with their release dates, so maybe it'll come soon in Europe, maybe this week, maybe next week. Just. Who knows? Sometime. I'm sure it won't be too long. This could be legit the low-key game of the week, and Alyssa knows it because it's her pick of the week. Also in Europe, it looks like Hot Shot Racing is getting its release. Is it physical? Is it a code in a box? Who knows? Let's wait and see. Lalo Prince. This week, the house in Fata Morgana is getting a physical release in North America from Limited Run Games. This is a visual novel. I've heard it's one of the best around. Mirin, our resident visual novel expert, is one of his favorites. In, in fact, I think it is his favorite. A gothic tale of suspense set in an old ass mansion. One of the best stories for a visual novel with great artwork. Your heart is going to be wretched. Limited Run have a standard release as well as a collector's edition, which I have to admit looks kind of sublime. A chunky art book, reversible poster, art cards, and a 6-6 six, six CD soundtrack. Why do they have to do this to me? I, I don't like buying from them, but they, they're selling a 6-CD soundtrack. 
Can I resist? You can pre-order this on March 26th, and this is Brent McLean, Ganicus, their pick of the week. Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons is Super Rare's latest game. They're working with a big publisher here, 505 Games. When they said they were working with a big publisher, I did think it would be 505 Games. I think limited runs dig at the company, sold me on which game it was going to be. Anyways, this is a three-hour adventure puzzle game. Narratively, I've heard it's pretty good. Super Rare have 5,000 copies available, and you can pre-order this on March 25th. And this is Jonathan Rumor's Pick of the Week. Alright, let's delve into the imports. If any take your fancy as per usual and you'd like to import them for yourself, then there are import links below in the description and the pinned comment. It helps support this little series so very, very much. It wouldn't be here today without you guys and your wonderful, amazing support. And in return for using our links, when checking out, you can also get a very nice 5% off any physical item from PlayAsia if you use the coupon code SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out. That's all one word, SWITCHWATCHTV while checking out. SD Gundam G Generation Crossroads Platinum Edition is a bit of a mouthful. It's tiring just saying it. Anyways, this is a complete edition of an import essential. Last year, or was it the year before? I don't know. Days are just kind of like mush now. They mean nothing to me. Uh, anyways, whenever it was, we got Gundam Cross Race, a really great strategy RPG, I'm a big fan of it, not quite as much as like Super Robot Wars, but it's up there. This Platinum Edition is the same game, but with DLC included, which is actually a ton, and also very reasonably priced. If you never picked up the original, this is definitely the best way to go now. The Japanese version should have English, but it's not like 100% confirmed, but it would be incredibly weird if it didn't. Uh, the Asian version definitely does have English. 100% and if I did not own the original I would be all over this bad boy. A similar release but perhaps slightly more exciting for me is the Southeast Asian version of SD Gundam G Generation Genesis for the Nintendo Switch. That's an even longer title. Originally this game was released physically in Japan and Hong Kong a few years ago and it did not have English. That was quite a disappointment but Singapore and all those other wonderful Southeast Asian countries Thank you for your amazing service in providing English imports. Thank you ever so much, guys. You gotta appreciate them. It's getting released there in English, so yeah, this is a slightly older game than Crossrays that I just mentioned, but I'm very excited about it. If you're into strategy RPGs with really cool attack animations, plenty of content, then look no further. This is essential in my opinion. I'm hoping to get a review for it, but I'll have to see. Depends how busy I am. Sea of Solitude. This is the third time I've had to mention you. I hope I don't have to mention you again. Anyways, its physical release is in Japan this week. This should be out in Europe by now. Japan this week. Uh, the Japanese version has English. If you're in North America, then you can pre-order from Limited Run right now. There's also a truckload of visual novels releasing in Japan this week. None of them have English though. Uh, we have AI, AI, I Kiss 2, there's no English. Lover Pretend, no English. A Clockwork Leyline, Kangero ni Samayo, Majo no English. No, sorry. Kangero ni Samayo, Majo, no English. Memories of History 1, no English. Memories of History 2, no English. The quintessential quintuplets, Summer Memories also coming 5, no English. And finally, the House of Fata Morgana, there is no English in this Japanese release. I contacted the publisher as to ask them why there was no English because, you know, it's already been translated and they said that I should wait for the limited run version because the English one is for those guys. So blessed. What about Europe? I hate that. I hate the fact that, like, especially Japanese publishers, if Limited Run get a Japanese publisher, that's it for Europe. Game over, almost. And that's it, by the way. What an absolutely mental week. It's crazy. All right, let's jump into the Let's Get Physical Spotlight. Remember, if you're showed off in this series, then at the end of the month, you'll be in the chance of winning a physical Switch game. Still don't know what it is yet. Sorry about that. Firstly, me, I'm going to go with a super obscure import exclusive release, a game I can barely pronounce properly, Gorzd. That's got to be Swedish, right? Anyways, this game is an arena combat arcade style game, a bit of Splatoon with a bit of kicks where you have to dominate the arena. There's a lengthy single player campaign along with a ton of multiplayer game modes for up to four people. It looks like a lot of fun, and if I actually had friends, maybe I would play it. I'm sure this would be top of the list during the parties. Uh, this Dominus edition also has exclusive content that the digital release never got, specifically exploring the library and lore of the Gorst. 
I really love the ridiculous artwork here. It's purposefully weird, giving me vibes of like Space Harrier or Never Ending Story. You also get stickers and, and a hilarious little storybook, which is kind of just like one big joke. Uh, it's a sticker book with no place to put the stickers, a puzzle that's impossible to solve, and it's aged between two to six years, but contains a corpse of the characters. I love it. This is my kind of humor. You even get a reversible cover just to amplify the weirdness, and it also has a downloadable soundtrack. If you want this weirdness for yourself, just remember it's only exclusive to Asia. I'll pop links below where you can find it. This really took me by surprise. They did a great job with this one. Alright, on to you lot. Matthew Hutton was one to pick up the two premium edition games, Blood Hockey and Pigeon Dev Collection. The one showed off these pickups a couple of recent releases alongside the often forgotten Pokémon Tournament. Executive producer Ganica showed off the big boy Blaster Master Zero that he got from Limited Run alongside a bunch of other recent games like Taxi Chaos and Three Kingdoms 14. Executive producer Alyssa was one of a good few to get Hades this week. I think we'll see even more next week. Susha picked up a couple of games, both new, Plants vs Zombies and Tabletop Racing, a game which I have not mentioned because the release date kept changing like every single week more or less, so I just, I just didn't bother. Tired Aiden picked up the fantastic Bayonetta 2. Where on earth is the third game? Just show us something guys. Is it alive? Neverbirth picked up a wealth of games recently, including decks from Red Ark Games, which I may show next week myself. Shadow007 got their hands on If My Heart Had Wings, the Play Asia exclusive. It's the limited edition, as you can see, which has some nice goodies inside. Same goes for Invicta. Many thanks for using our links and code, and also doing a little unboxing for everyone to see. I can't wait for mine to arrive. Canuck sent in this photo showing off some recent additions, including a couple of new releases from last week, Savia and the name that's too long, and Amalur. Art Phoenix has already sent in this photo of some pickups. Caligula Effect is one that I've wanted to get for a while now. I'm guessing that's a reversible cover. Transient Image, many thanks for using our links and codes on the games here. Enter the Gungeon was going really cheap on Play Asia a couple of weeks back, and in fact, it's just checking just now, it is $20 as I'm writing this on Saturday. Don't miss out on that. Tyson Bailey picked up these, another with a couple of new releases, Hades and Emelure. Kishimoto, thanks for using our links and codes, really appreciate the support, and you've got some great games. Nice to see the Japanese Valhalla, I showed that off last week. Dame Fortuna, many thanks for using our links and codes on Dragon's Dogma, the Japanese version, with some awesome artwork. It's easy to forget that this never got a physical release in Europe, because Capcom Europe sucks. Choco Loco James made me insanely jealous with this limited edition of the recent Darius Cosmic Revelation, the double pack of classic arcade shmups. I love it. Yikes Bike showed off some serious recent pickups, including a couple of obscure imports like It'll Do. Respect for the fight crab, as always. Derek Jenkins, thanks for using our links and codes. Amazing support and appreciate the commitment to the import scene. Out there at the top, you can see the collector's edition of Mersion Forest. Looks really nice. I think I may get that instead of the standard once I actually tick it off my list. H&F, also thanks for using our links and codes on Food Girls and Abyss of the Sacrifice. Definitely need to get both of these physically at some point. Also great to see Tiny Metal out and about from Limited Run. That's like been a lifetime. Omniamon showed off these recent pickups, some essential Switch games right there, Astral Chain, Smash Ultimate, Fire Emblem. Julio picked up these games, that Rockman 5-in-1 is amazing, although not easy to get a hold of for a reasonable price these days, at least last time I checked. Ty Whittle was one to pick up Crash 4, I can't believe this did not get a physical release in Europe, what on earth is happening? Crash sells like hotcakes in Europe. What are they doing? Griffin got some low print goodness, including a double helping of Gris alongside the Carrion Starfish. Max12161 wanted to show off his love for Crash to the World. It's great stuff. Tap Dancing Tommy showed off a Nintendo 64 classic. I loved renting this game back in the day. Goma, thanks for using our links and codes for some of these games. Moon is a beautifully stunning collector's edition. I can't wait to open mine up if I ever, ever get back to the UK. Steven Domit, thanks for using our links and codes on the Atelier Dust Trilogy. Pretty much an essential import, although on the pricey side, but you know, three massive JRPGs in one. You have to understand that. I can't wait for the Mysterious Trilogy. Shireen wants to show off their current display, which changes depending on which games come in and look nice. Looks beautiful now. 
Soupy Snacks picked up A Train, uh, which came with a soundtrack order bonus. I really wish I had the time to review this one. I it looks um, it looks really good. And finally, Kozai Hard picked up these games to make it 157 physical Switch games. Really nice collection. All right, it's time for a roundup. They Visipon, Steven Domit, Lars, Ying, Geese Nuts, Yarrow, Raven Knight, Brian Mills, Adam Karaskilo. Pabs, Joshua Brown, Jaten, Peter Clark, Professor Loney, Crit Cat, Silver House, Streaming on the Corner, Park Ranger, Certified, Inactive Yeti, Vedic, JP, Parsnip Coffee, Cameron Duncan. All right, guys, thank you ever so much. Please send me your pictures over on Twitter at so what about game. You can DM me or tag me in a post to use the hashtag Let's Get Physical. Remember, we have a new email address. Yes, a new one. Switch watch spotlight at gmail.com. Please don't use the old one because it's prime time turd. We also have a Discord, which is a nice way for us to have a chat with you guys. And you can send your pictures there in the submission section. The Discord server is below. Please only send me one picture per week. Right, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode of New Physical. Special thanks to our executive producers, as always, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boombox, Brent McLean, Jonathan Rumor, Ganicus, Santa Tartaruga, Alolan Jojo, Alexander Kato, JCrod7776, Elissa, and Punky Dooster. Many thanks for your support and our other YouTube members. Please check out last week's episode in case you missed it, and also our brand new channel dedicated to PS5 and Xbox content. And also, James's weekly bargains video every Sunday, trying to save you some cash. We'll see you guys over there. Take care.